Good afternoon, and thank you for attending today's final Smart Manufacturing Hub presentation featuring EOS. My name is Nick Smith. I'm the Director of Corporate Partnerships at SME, and I have the pleasure of introducing our next speaker, Scott Killian. Scott is the Business Development Manager for Aerospace at EOS North America, directing business development and strategy, supporting more than 30 aerospace OEMs and suppliers in North America. Scott has been in the high and emerging technology sector for over 30 years and joined EOS in 2011 to support the company's aerospace clients. Having seen over 40 aerospace manufacturing facilities around the globe, Scott has a keen understanding of how manufacturing integrates into the aerospace environment. Scott's presentation today will be on Industry 4.0, Factory of the Future. Without further ado, Mr. Steve Killian. Thanks, Nick. Uh, thanks for everyone attending. Uh, yeah, I think if you were actually saw the previous uh, presentation, this one will kind of fit in uh, a, a little bit with the, uh, the uh, IoT of things. Uh, so this is really kind of looking at how additive manufacturing may, may look in, as factories grow and become more data rich and automation happens. So just without, uh, so we'll look a little bit at the, how the disruption of industry in general has, has driven a lot of changes in today's manufacturing floors and production processes. Uh, touch a little bit on Industry 4.0, uh, and then look at some of our additive manufacturing solutions and how we see things uh, possibly uh, as you move forward uh, with an automated factory of the future. Uh, and with a few case studies and an implement, imp, implementation case study that we have right now, and then we'll have time for a question or two. So how does disruption, how does innovation um, disruption work over time? Um, in the past, and I think that you see the phone here, but you can also look, think about the automotive industry. Uh, you know, things have uh, been developed, and then over time there's gradual changes in those products uh, until you get to what is probably the most refined product. Uh, the difference today, and probably the last five to 10 years, is that you know companies learn, grow, and excel, and and come out with new uh, innovations and new technologies, and then that has to happen again at a real quick pace. So in in today's world, people are being challenged to innovate very quickly and get new products out. And uh, this this particular slide shows a little bit of some of the major technologies of our time. And, and the adoption rate of those technologies. And as you can see, as you go m more toward the, you're right, you're right of the slide, the adoption of technologies in the, in the, in the last really 10 years, 10 to, 10 to 15 years, has accelerated tremendously fast. So it's difficult for people to, you know, to, uh, to develop and innovate new products and get them out to market quick enough. Uh, so there, everybody's looking at how you might be able to get an edge on that. So the next few slides will take a look at maybe the evolution of uh, what we know about manufacturing today. Uh, so approximately 200 years ago, there was obviously the Industrial Revolution started and, and uh, there was a lot of steam power. And then over the course of the next 100 years, we kind of get to, to, to what, what you see here. Uh, you know, obviously some more automation, uh, the introduction of some machinery equipment uh, into the processes. Uh, and um, I also like to ask if anybody recognized the one thing that's still used in a factory today that's in this picture. There's probably, may might be a few things, but there's one, one that stands out. The broom, exactly. <laughs> we haven't changed the broom yet, uh, but that's probably next. Uh, and then when you look closer to today, it still looks kind of similar. Uh, you know, there's some automation, more machines, uh, still a lot of people, still a lot of manual processes. Uh, we think maybe the future will look a little bit more like this. And uh, this is currently a, a, a room in our headquarters in Kreiling, Germany. Uh, these are all uh, polymer-based machines. Uh, there's 17 of them in one room, and they, they run around the clock. Uh, next, I'd like to show you a little video. I have two videos in this uh, presentation that uh, will we'll kind of cover a little bit of our vision. So the next one is really products uh, that we have today and that we're working on now that will be out uh, before, probably before the end of the year. 
so let me do this one. So let me dive a little bit deeper into what you saw. If, uh, if, you've, if you have experience with our platforms, then you probably understood that a little bit better. But basically what we're doing is what we call a shared modules concept, where you don't necessarily need all the auxiliary equipment for every machine when you're setting up a, a you know, production facility. So we separated some of that, and, and some of that equipment can be shared amongst more of the build chambers. The build chambers are the most important part, because that's where your, that's where your money's made, is in, in the build itself. Uh, so there's automation aspects uh, to that. Um, and then software, obviously the software layer is very important here, the data layer that lays on top of all of this. All of these pieces of equipment communicate to each other, they all communicate back to a central integration standpoint. Uh, we have software that tracks the machines, uh, monitors the machines, uh, and you can actually view the monitoring processes of all your machines uh, on, on basically on your smartphone if you would like. Uh, but uh, in one central location, you can send data to these machines uh, from one central location. So you don't necessarily have to be down on the shop floor to uh, interact with the machine. So it's, uh, it's really a, a, an organizational transformation, as we say here, that uh, really a, a completely different thought process on how additive manufacturing fits into uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, well, the factory of the future. But, and, and being able to scale that uh, very easily uh, where it might not have been uh, uh, so easy before. So you look at a hardware integration, again, quality control integration uh, and, and automation. Uh, I'd like to say that all of this is, uh, we actually have this uh, in a working state right now, and I'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the, uh, the plant that we're working with on this, uh, but all this stuff is in process and we'll, we will have this probably deliverable by the, by the end of this year. Uh, a lot of people also ask when you talk about additive, is this going to replace anything, right? Is it going to replace castings? Is it going to re replace injection molding? Uh, is it going to replace machining? Uh, no, I don't think it'll ever replace those. Uh, I think uh, what we try to point out here is that additive is certainly a part of the digital factory layout uh, and, and a seamless part flow through the manufacturing operation. So there's always things that happen before additive manufacturing and, and certainly there's post-processing things that happen to have to happen after additive manufacturing. Uh, so it is part of what you could say is a, a feeder line. 
uh, with, and obviously this feeder line is talking to the backbone of your, uh, your ERP uh, or, or MRP data system. So we look at, look at additive as being a complementary technology in, in, in this area today, which helps you reduce total production costs because obviously additive doesn't have a lot, of, doesn't have tooling uh, involved. There's a lot of flexibility from a standpoint of what you can build from an additive standpoint, which gives you increased plant flexibility. And it's, a, you know, again, data-driven um, decision making. It equals a more cost-efficient plant. So the aspects of Industry 4.0, which most people know now, is you know the service really being more customer-centric. Um, you know, allows you to uh, be more flexible in how you address, uh, you know, your ramp up or even your ramp down uh, of certain products, and it's it's more of a, the pull-stretch growth method. Uh, flexibility, 100% pull production. Uh, you can. Uh, have a m much more flexibility and, and the ability to scale uh, with additive in, in this scenario than you possibly do with uh, more traditional methods. And data, we've all talked about this and it, it'll, you'll continue to hear this a lot about how the, the customer and the factory are actually connected through data and it actually, uh, based on what Mr. Porter says here, is now stands on par with people, technology, and capital as a core asset of a corporation. I think everybody can agree with that. So how do you get started? Um, we are, like I said, we already have solutions. Solutions uh, in this area uh, do exist or will exist uh, later on this year. Um, so uh, we see education being very critical uh, to the implementation and assisting people uh, in bringing additive in-house and implementing it uh, correctly. Uh, a lot of people in the past have brought additive in-house and then tried to figure out what to do with it. Hey, we, we need to buy it, we need to get an additive, but if you don't know how are you going to do it? It's, it can be a waste of money. So we actually offer a lot of specialized education platforms. We have a, uh, over, over 60 consultants uh, throughout the world that can come in and help customers uh, really understand the impacts of additive and, and where they're going to, uh, and where they're going to plug it into their business. Uh, connected manufacturing systems. Uh, obviously, this is both third party and even EOS uh, solutions. Uh, we're we're becoming more and more of a software company today, and I think all the additive manufacturers are going to have to move in that direction because everything's connected, and uh, you know everything's data driven. And I, I sound like a broken record, but that that's, that is true. And we're constantly working and updating our, our our software and how we talk to other software programs. So this is going to be a, uh, I, I believe, a very critical aspect of of the usage of additive manufacturing technologies moving forward as well as is the software side of it. And production ready AM systems, which EOS uh, does have in existence and uh, has a huge installed base already in the field. So I have two, uh, two case studies and then I'll wrap it up with another beautiful video. Uh, Audi has uh, set up a 3D printing center in um, Eagleslot to develop uh, material and processes for production. Um, so they were looking at how they could move from prototyping to actually having an impact on automotive, uh, you know, production, uh, and, and they really focused in on on tooling. So production of insert dies for uh, die cast molds and hot working segments. Uh, they can actually make components in small batches uh, and that were light, lighter weight and AM um, economically optimized. So. Our role in this is we provided the equipment and process cooperation partner. We worked with them uh, directly uh, in our Kryling headquarters uh, for about eight months uh, till they perfected everything they wanted to perfect in this process. And then we rolled it out into their pr production facility and assisted with the, you know, the training and the engineering and the consulting on how to ramp their, their employees up on how to use this process. And now the you might have heard about this in the, in the news, the next gen AM factory that we're working with, with Premium Airtech and, and Daimler. Um, so we're looking at a, a whole environment and they will have this plugged in automated uh, system as I showed in the previous video um, at, at some point here later this year. So they're looking at uh, material development, uh, adding high quality metal powder, uh, the efficiencies of our EOS M400, our large platform with four laser mach machine. Uh, we're working on processes for automated removal of the material and the parts 
and, and robotic uh, systems to help uh, with the automation of, of post-processing. Uh, so this is really, truly probably going to be one of the first digital AM factories of the future that will, that will actually be in motion. Play. This is kind of our even more forward vision of what we think the factory of the future will look like. Thank you. Coming to a location near you soon, I hope. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Scott. Uh, folks, does anybody have any questions for Scott? Please just raise your hand and I can uh, run over the mic for you. Any questions? All right. That's good. Thanks. Scott, thank you very much for your time. How about a big round of applause?